Well, good morning San Antonio starts right now. Hi, good morning. It's Friday. Happy Friday and it's August 13th. Yeah, it's Friday the 13th, mm -hmm. but we're not going to freak out because this is an extended edition of the early morning show because Mike Osterhage is here yes. filling in for Justin today as we go outside with live cam and check in with Mike. Hey there. How are you? I good to have you here. Are you doing every newscast we have today? No. Surprise. Okay. Katie's going to be doing the evening show. Okay. Oh, okay. And then I'll do the noon show and skid skedaddle down to uh, Market Square for uh, SA Live. I was being facetious. No, I know you were. But anyway, so, hey, it's fun to be here. I haven't done a 9 o'clock show in a while. So, all right, as far as uh, temperatures right now, we are in the uh, 70s and we've got uh, a lot of humidity out there. Had more sunshine earlier, but you see the clouds have started to kind of kind of move on in here and fill in a little bit. And I think we'll have sort of a mixture of sunshine and clouds like yesterday and that's going to hold temperatures down another degree 95 yesterday that was one degree lower than the day before that 94 today a couple of showers a couple of thunderstorms out there are going to be possible we still have some fog showing up around the area although much of it is just starting to sort of uh, burn off still over there around the Grange it wasn't as thick as it has been the past couple of mornings however and uh, yeah these temperatures you know mid upper 70s 80s feels a little bit warmer than that this weekend we are going to be staying about three four degrees below the average the normal high temperature and a couple more showers and a thunderstorm are possible tomorrow but especially on Sunday not a, a huge rain event but that's going to be the uh, best chance for uh, we'll see a little bit of rain around here which is very encouraging and great news thank you Mike a quick look out at the Rosewood Trans Guide this morning things are looking good this Friday morning there at Highway 90 and I-35 let's take a look at today's nine at nine The San Antonio report says hundreds of Northeast ISD employees may have been exposed to COVID-19 after attending a convocation ceremony earlier this week. Two employees reportedly tested positive after the event. The CDC is expected to hold a meeting to confirm the FDA's decision to allow a booster shot to immunocompromised Americans. The FDA's decision is not an opening for booster doses for the general population. Tropical depression, Fred, still churning just south of the Florida Keys. Forecasters say Fred could strengthen into a tropical storm sometime today. Parts of the Florida coast are still under a tropical storm watch. The latest census data is out and Bear County is bigger. More than 2 million people now call this part of Texas home, making San Antonio the second largest city in Texas. The state also grew, gaining two congressional seats. In Afghanistan, the second biggest city, Kandahar, has fallen to Taliban fighters who claim to control the governor's office and police headquarters. Thirteen provincial capitals are now under Taliban rule. 3,000 American troops are being sent to secure the U.S. Embassy. Homeland Security officials say the U.S. is facing an unprecedented number of illegal migrants. Border Patrol arresting more than 200,000 people in July, the highest number in 20 years. That morning cup of coffee could cost you more. The New York Times reporting the price of coffee beans is up almost 44% this year. Extreme weather in Brazil, supply chain issues, and political unrest in Colombia are blamed. Britney Spears may be one step closer to freedom, for now at least. Her father, Jamie Spears, announcing he will step down as Britney's conservator. However, the father is now calling for a new conservator to take over. Attorneys say the legal battle is far from over. Ryan Reynolds returns to the big screen this weekend. Free guys about a bank teller who discovers he's only alive in the world of a popular video game. Action comedy hits theaters tonight. And that's today's Nine at Nine. In our news this morning, adults aren't the only ones ending up in the hospital with COVID-19. Just yesterday, 193 new COVID admissions were accounted for at local hospitals. 28 of those in that day alone were pediatric cases. For a closer look at how the Delta variant is affecting San Antonio's children, Chief Medical Officer and VP of Emergency Services for Children's Hospital of San Antonio, Dr. Norman Christopher joins us live. Good morning, doctor. Good morning. How are you this morning? We're great. Thank you. Let's talk about the Delta variant. As someone who's in the pediatric ER every day, what are you seeing right now? Um, you, know, you know, this uh, uh, the, the, the dynamic now is is clearly different than what it was even five or six weeks ago. As, as was true, I think, with many, we, we sort of felt like we were getting out of the pandemic. We um, were returning a little bit more to normal. We were watching this Delta virus. We were watching this trend. 
uh, and have found that the impact that it's had on, on, on children, on pediatric patients, is a little bit greater than what we were anticipating early on. Uh, our volumes are higher uh, with patients with COVID infection and, and the severity generally, the severity in those kids who are infected seems to be a little bit greater than, than, uh, than uh, before. And Dr. Christopher, as you and your team continue to take in sick children, what is your message to people watching? What do you want them to know? Um, you know, this is a pandemic really of, of uh, two different proportions. Uh, it, it continues to impact uh, individuals who are unvaccinated to a greater extent than those who are vaccinated. I think the key message uh, is that when a vaccine uh, is available to uh, one of your kids uh, or to you as a, as a parent, uh, to make sure and review uh, that uh, situation with your with the physician or the nurse practitioner who you trust uh, and be very open minded. We continue to see lots of hesitancy around vaccines. I will tell you the vaccine's effective, it's safe, and it can prevent uh, severe disease and in, in those exposed to COVID virus. Dr. Christopher, COVID-19 is not the only illness your staff is dealing with right now, right? Um, it is so true. Um, you know, we we um, we we base our 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 thinking, our staffing, our our planning around uh, the seasonality of of different infections in, in children. Uh, very common, usually around September, October, uh, and through January, February, and March. Uh, we prepare for a, a very common infection, the respiratory syncytial virus, the RSV virus. RSV causes wheezing, shortness of breath, low oxygen levels in kids, and particularly the very young who are affected by uh, the, 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 the infection. There's no um, vaccine, and, and so we prepare every year uh, for that. Uh, for the first time ever, that at least in my career, we're seeing RSV all through the summer months, and, and that with uh, the, the rise in, in COVID-19 and pediatric patients has really given us a double whammy. Um, we're looking at some of the statewide data, and um, we're we're looking at what could potentially be a peak in RSV, uh, um, you know, activity statewide. When you when you compare San Antonio data to that, uh, we're a little bit behind. Uh, so we're we're still on the up with uh, with regards to RSV, but we're we're hoping that maybe in the next two or three weeks we might be uh, seeing a peak here in town too. All right, Dr. Norman Christopher, thank you so much for joining us. Of course, thank you. Have a good weekend. Well, now to a story we're following very closely this morning here at KSAT. Hundreds of any ISD employees potentially exposed to the coronavirus. That's according to the San Antonio Report. District employees attended a convocation ceremony Monday afternoon at the Legacy Educational Excellence High School. Two of those employees who were there later tested positive for COVID-19. The San Antonio report goes on to say the district notified the 500 people who may have been in contact with those two employees. At the time, people on school property were not required to wear masks. That changed Tuesday when Metro Health issued a directive ordering everyone who enters a public school to wear masks. District spokeswoman for NEISD Aubrey Chancellor told the San Antonio report the district will not conduct contact tracing to determine who was directly exposed to those sick employees. Mayor Ron Nirenberg is expressing his frustration after a lack of first responders forced the city to be without emergency transport services for 26 minutes. City officials say that's because hospitals are dealing with COVID patients and other emergencies at the very same time. The city hopes to add more manpower by speeding up the graduation of an entire fire cadet class and requesting 550 medical professionals help in hospitals. The state is sending 300 for San Antonio and other surrounding areas for now. HEB is encouraging customers to make an appointment if you want to get a free COVID-19 shot. Walk-ins will only be available from noon to 5 p.m. starting next week. And CVS and Walgreens are also offering the vaccine at no cost. We also have a list of free vaccine clinics online, kset.com. For those looking to get their COVID shots today, here's a chance. There are two vaccine pop-up clinics happening this morning. One is at the First Mexican Baptist Church. It's happening right now. Ends at 5 p.m. over there at 201 Meredith Drive. The second one happening at the Dawson Community Center at 2500 East Commerce Street. That's going on right now. Lasts through 3 p.m. This information is available for you right now on ksat.com. And time now is 907, still ahead on GMSA at 9. Bear County growing according to the latest census data. Look how many more people call San Antonio home at the look at, big, at the bigger picture at how America is growing. But first, an angry mob of parents bombards healthcare workers in Tennessee 
The reason behind that anger next in Morning Headlines. In your morning headlines, the mask mandate debate is really starting to get heated and there is a buzz about bee snatchers. Feel the dreams becomes a reality and even bears need a place, a cool place to hang out. David Sears is here. Good morning. Yeah, they're not hibernating yet. It's hot outside. Perfect timing. You go to the family pool. That's right. Got that for you just a second. But first, the mask mandate debate starting to get really emotional. In some cases, it's turning ugly. The latest example in Tennessee, this happening in a county just south of Nashville. Now, parents on both sides of the issue expressed their strong opinions at a school board meeting. Then the board passed a temporary mask requirement for elementary schools. It goes into effect next week. It lasts until September 21st, at least for now. You're looking at parents who are obviously upset with members of the board after their decision, and they were waiting for them in the parking lot. These two guys getting right up on a board member in his car, yelling at him, basically threatening him. Calm down. Yes. Calm down. We, we know who, we you, know are. who you are. We know, we who, know, you know are. who you are. You can leave freely, but we will you. find you, and we you know who you are. Again. You, you, will will you, you will never be allowed in public again. You will never be allowed. You'll never let be allowed in public again. Yeah, just a lot of yelling and screaming. As you can see, law enforcement on hand, they were able to pretty much keep things under control. The board member eventually drove off with more people yelling at him, but he did get out of there. All right, let's take you to Long Island. Somebody stung a several bee farmers by stealing queen bees. Larry Kaiser is a farmer and raises bees. The thieves got away with his queen bee, the mated queen, remaining colony, and even the frames. But they gave Kaiser some replacement bees. But the special queen bee that was stolen was part of a breeding project to develop honeybees that survived the winters on Long Island. Kaiser was not the first to get hit by the bee bandit either. A couple of days before, they stole bees from the Sisters of St. Joseph's property. Extremely, extremely disheartened. Uh, you know, bees are an important part of our ecosystem. Person knew exactly what they were doing and the value of what they were doing. Now, the beekeeper's not sure what kind of an impact the thefts are going to have on their crops and flowers since they are pollinators. Pretty incredible event last night. That is the star of the 1989 movie Field of Dreams, Kevin Costner, walking onto his reality. Last night, Major League Baseball players replayed scenes from the iconic movie. They walked through the rows of corn out onto the field before actually playing a game between the Yankees and White Sox. The White Sox, the team in the movie, it all took place in a cornfield in Dyersville, Iowa, where the film was made. They played the game next to the field where they actually made the movie. One of the other stars of the movie, James Earl Jones, whose voice is unparalleled, voiced over various sequences that were shown throughout the broadcast. Costner described the field as perfect. This is what the night was, even ending with a walk-off two-run homer in the cornfield from the White Sox, Tim Anderson, to give the Sox a win, 9-8. The evening was such a big hit. Baseball says they're going to do it again. We will be back. Um, I think it's pretty clear we're going to be back next year, and we'll have to talk about it after that. But um, it, it's just been so successful that it's hard um, not to take the opportunity to do it again. So once again, if you think about it for a second, it was a movie about a dream, about a father and son and baseball, and it turned into reality. Absolutely amazing. All right, finally this morning, hey, hey, boo-boo, did somebody say pool party? See, there he is. Look at him. Look at him back there. See him? This is in Connecticut. That's a bear hanging out in the Felon family backyard. Some of the Felon family were in the main part of the pool when the bear appeared in a little pond at the other end of that waterfall. He was about 30 feet away from the family. They weren't too bothered by him, and the bear apparently not too bothered by them. Hey, hey. <laughs> got to cool down. He's got it all figured it. out. Yeah. He's, he's like, like scratching and like, oh, this is nice. You know what? It almost looks like he's been there before. <laughs> just, this is the first time somebody's yeah. caught him. This is true. It's like, I know where the fun place is to yeah. hang out. The it's very, family. Got very cool. comfortable there. Very comfortable. That's cool stuff. And back to Field of Dreams real quick. Uh -huh. What a cool broadcast. Yeah. Fox did a great job with it last night. You and I were talking about it. It's so cool to know that they are going to bring it back for next year. 30 years ago. 30, well, I guess 32, mm -hmm. 1989, they made this movie, and here it is, an actual live game mm -hmm. in that cornfield. And, you know, when you think about it, one thing, when you think about it, a lot of us played Little League baseball, mm -hmm. and I was actually living in Illinois. Dad was in the Air Force. 
and we actually played Little League pretty much in a cornfield. <laughs> yes. So this, I mean, that, so this is not that far right. from reality when you think about That's when true. you grew up and where you played ball and in the backyard and on farms and all across the country. I mean, that just, yeah. it was just, it was, it was awesome. That was a magical Absolutely night awesome. for sure. Yeah, it was. Cool all right, David. See. Thank you very much. Thank you. Let's Mike's see. back with us now. And uh, yes, sir. Okay, my question. Hi. Obviously, the Sox had their throwback uniforms. Yes. Were those uh, Yankee throwbacks? They or? changed the font, I think, okay. on the front. And uh, it looked like the numbers were different on the back, too. Yeah, I think they, they tweaked theirs a little bit. But White Sox, for sure. As a matter of fact, one of the White Sox players said during the broadcast, we're trying to get these unis in regular rotation. Yeah. Yeah. Which would be also kind of oh, cool, yeah, wouldn't that it? That would be cool. Because way back then, did they have actual road uniforms? I don't think they did, did they? Yeah. Like they I, do today? I don't um, honestly know. David, do you know that? I, I don't know. I know they were cotton and they were hot. <laughs> <laughs> they were cotton. And or they were wool and, and they, they were didn't have a yeah. Nike swoosh on them. <laughs> but that's about all. I was, I yeah, I was going to say they didn't have a Nike swoosh way back when. So. <laughs> no, the Sox uniforms were really cool. Like yeah, that, so I love were. those. Cool. All right, uh, this afternoon as the uh, kids come home from school, there you know one or two showers going to be paused primarily down to the southeast. 94. Yes, it is going to feel like the upper 90s, uh, low hundreds. Not quite the uh, heat index we had the other day. Oh, darn, my picture didn't pop up. It's a good one. Wait, let me do one quick thing here. Was this thing going to show? Uh, nope, it won't show for me. Next okay, time. well, we'll just go on to the next picture here. It's a really cool picture of the moon. I'm going to get it next half hour. We do have some uh, clouds hanging around here. Add a lot more sunshine right as the sun was coming up, and some of these clouds have started to uh, fill in just a little bit more. And uh, we had those low morning clouds still hanging around here. And down to the southeast, there are a few showers starting to come in on the sea breeze, and some of these will continue to sort of work their way a little bit further inland throughout the rest of today, which is what a lot of computer models are definitely in agreement on. So we have uh, some of these around here and then by later on this afternoon again, the majority of rain down in the southeast. I think we keep a few more clouds around like yesterday, so that will shave a degree off temperatures. Take anything we can get and then tonight pleasant evening once the sun finally goes down then tomorrow better chance for some rain, especially in the northern half of our viewing area. And then all that's going to sort of drift down to the south as we go into Sunday. And that's going to be the best day for a chance of rain. And it's not like it's going to be a huge rain event around here. A couple of showers, a couple of thunderstorms. Bless you, Stephanie. She just sneezed. And uh, 40% chance of rain. So yeah, a good amount of people will see uh, a shower or two around here, but don't get too disappointed if you don't. And then going into Monday, there will still be a couple of those uh, leftover showers. Okay, quick check of the tropics and Fred is still a tropical depression. It wasn't really a strong tropical storm, but obviously it has moved across land. It's just kind of hugging the coast of Cuba right there. And so it doesn't really get all of the energy from the uh, warm waters of the uh, Straits of Florida. But once it moves back into the Straits of Florida there, it is going to forecast regain strength, just a minimal uh, tropical storm and sort of hug the coast of uh, west coast of Florida and move right up there and then continue up into the Tennessee Valley uh, over the next couple of days in the first part of next week. Further out to the east, there is another storm right there. Hurricane Center is watching, so it's a pretty good chance that it's going to become a uh, tropical storm and continue to develop right now. Long range does have that taking just about the same path, actually staying a little bit further to the east and heading probably in toward the Carolinas, and that would be sometime late next week. But nothing for us in, you know, in the tropics. 90 today at noon, partly cloudy skies and once again, a high temperature up to 94. A shower or two primarily down to the southeast later on this afternoon and a little bit better chance and then up that chance somewhat. Again, not a sure thing at all, but uh, by the, uh, the you know Sunday, a few folks are going to have one or two showers, thunderstorms out there. If you got uh, some uh, outdoor plans, I wouldn't change them this weekend, but okay. maybe if you wash your car, you will get a shower or two. I oh. do have outdoor plans tomorrow, Mike. Uh, that's right, you do. I do, yeah. Uh, there's a charity fishing tournament tomorrow, and I want to let you guys know about it. I mentioned this briefly last month, and it is tomorrow. The sixth annual CASA Kitty Pole Tournament is at Medina Lake. That is tomorrow, August 14th from 7 a.m. to noon. And uh, for rules and information, look up Kayak Anglers of San Antonio or CASA on Facebook. I've also posted the information on my Facebook page. Look for KSAT Mark Austin. I'll see you guys out there. But a major role, uh, Kitty Pole, definitely. Has to be one of those 
character, character polls like Frozen, <laughs> Spider-Man, mm -hmm. can't be anything else, and then we donate them to charity in the end. Aww. Can you put your special lures on them, or do you have to use the ones that come with you? The only change we can make is we can change out the fishing line, because the, the, the line on those is kind of, eh. But yeah, we use whatever lure or bait we want. So it can be a Hello Kitty. Fish, it pole. could be a Hello Kitty. <laughs> Do you have a Hello Kitty fishing pole? <laughs> no, but I need one. <laughs> okay, well, we'll try to Fish find you Fish stories one. come Monday on GMSA. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> All right, right now it's 921, and it's the last big weekend for the kiddos to get out and enjoy the sun. Alicia Barrera is live with what's coming up after the break. Hey you guys, good morning. A tough gig out here. The San Antonio River Authority is hosting me once again. We're going to be speaking with Mike in just a bit, just ahead here on GMSA. But we're talking about fun summer activities. And this weekend, again, like Mike said, don't change your plans or maybe add kayaking to your plans. We'll be back in a bit. exactly 925. Welcome back. Last big weekend for some to get out and enjoy summer fun before school starts back up. The San Antonio River Authority wants to remind you about all the fun and history along the San Antonio River, River whether it's hiking or riding a bike on the Mission Reach Trail. Alicia Beretta is live at the Padre Park with the details. Hey, good morning. Good morning. No cowbell this time. So if you watch GMSA weekends a couple of months ago, we had a little incident on the San Antonio River, but I'm with Mike Gramley. He is the superintendent, recreation superintendent for the San Antonio River Authority. So Mike, we were talking about it. This is a very good option for families just to come out, explore, obviously do some exercise, but explore outside of the river. There's little pit stops. Yeah, there's a lot of stuff to do outside of the Mission Reach or, or bordering on the Mission Reach, like going to the UNESCO World Heritage, World Heritage uh, um, missions that are run all along the river here. Also, we have the Hot Wells ruins that are just up the, up the way here from where we are on the river. Um, also, you have Blue Star just right up, up in town. You can go have a drink or get something to eat after kayaking on the river. Yeah, that's A lot, a lot of convenience right in the city and kayaking. And then right now, one of the cool things, the chute is over here to the right, right? Right. Mike? Okay, so we're gonna make our way over here to the right-hand side. Mike, for people who want to come out here, uh, do they need to bring their own kayak? There's obviously rental services. What's there, that about? There are, we have we have re approved <laughs> rental services on our public website at sariverauthority.org, and those vendors can help you out with getting kayaks to rent or taking oh, you on a kayak journey. He said, journey. put my hands up. Oh. <laughs> Our microphones are protected, and this isn't too bad, and we're not even getting too wet. Mike, this is a lot of fun. <laughs> we made it in one piece. <laughs> so again, this is just a great opportunity for families to um, come out to the San Antonio River and explore these fun activities. And Mike, one thing that we were saying that anytime you come out to the river, you're really helping raise awareness of what the River Authority does and obviously the importance of this waterway. Right, exactly. I mean, really, San Antonio wouldn't be here if it wasn't for the San Antonio River. And it is really great to have people in the community make connections with their river. And you kayak all the time. So what's your favorite part about kayaking, specifically here on the on the river? Well, I oftentimes get to work with kids with kids here locally and get them, yeah. take them kayaking for the first time and seeing their faces and letting them enjoy the river and making a connection outside is one of the most enjoyable parts for me. All right, Mike. Well, thank you so much for being with us to thank the you. San Antonio River Authority for allowing us to have some fun this morning. So again, if you're looking for a fun summer idea, you can't beat this. Guys, back to you. Uh, I'm jealous. Looks nice out there. And you're brave, Alicia. Yeah, Good job. It's beautiful. All right. <laughs> Fantastic. Thanks, guys. Thanks, Alicia. Looks like a ton of fun. There's much more ahead on GMSA at 9 on your Friday. So Becky Hammond, Spurs Summer League, and the Dallas Cowboys playing tonight. Those are just a few of today's sports headlines. David will be back in just a bit. Plus, KSAT, KSAT rather, digital journalist Farah Sabawi is standing by for a live update on the latest census data here in Bear County. We are growing by leaps and bounds. We'll check in with Ferris after the break. And Mark and Stephanie, it is literally time for you guys to eat your hearts out because we're going to be talking restaurant week coming up right after the break. It is Culinaria's big push to promote the food industry here in the San Antonio area. We have some amazing food out here at Sangria on the Berg on Fredericksburg Road. We'll talk about that and more about the upcoming weeks for restaurant week right after the break. 
Welcome back. It's about 931. The 2020 census report is officially out and natives to San Antonio welcomed a bunch of new neighbors. That story fresh on KSAT.com right now. For a closer look at the changes, we bring in KSAT digital, digital journalist Ferris Sabawi. Welcome back, Ferris. Hey, guys. Happy Friday. Same to you. First of all, tell us how does San Antonio growth compare to 10 years ago? Yeah, so between 2010 and uh, 2020, San Antonio did see 8% uh, growth in its population. Now we're a population of about 1.4 million. And while that is impressive, that, uh, that rate is actually uh, half of what it was from the previous decade between 2000 and 2010, when San Antonio had actually grown by... Um, by 16%. So uh, regardless, San Antonio remains one of the largest cities in the United States, um, one of the, you know, the biggest cities uh, in Texas as well. And I think that's evidenced by uh, actually the budget that was presented earlier this week, one of the biggest budgets we've seen. So uh, no doubt San Antonio continues to keep growing. And what about our like neighbors, neighbors? How is the growth in counties that neighbor San Antonio? Yeah, this was really interesting, Stephanie. So Bayer County grew by 17% over the last decade. We broke that 2 million mark. But the fastest growth was actually seen um, in the counties north and northeast of Bayer County. Both Guadalupe and Kendall County grew by about 30%. But the most impressive growth actually was out of Comal County, which grew by 49%. And uh, that's really interesting. And in fact, the Census Bureau said that New Braunfels is one of the 10 fastest growing cities uh, in the entire United States. So even when, if we're not seeing all this growth directly to San Antonio, we're seeing it in that San Antonio metropolitan area. And uh, it'll be interesting um, you know, to see those New Braunfels numbers continue to grow uh, in, as the years keep going. You know, we got used to saying we're the seventh largest city. It's now mm -hmm. interesting to see we're the sixth largest city in the entire country, Ferris. So what do we know about the changing demographics across the state? Yeah, so this is um, interesting, Mark. You, you know, we've seen that um, the Hispanics have really helped the population growth in Texas. That means Texas is a lot more diverse of a state. But the reason that that's important uh, is because with the population growth comes two new congressional seats that the Texas legislature will be in charge of drying up as they worry about redistricting. So you have to wonder with this population growth, where will those new congressional seats come? It could come in the Houston area, it could possibly come in the Dallas area. And obviously we've seen a lot of growth here in San Antonio, so it could come right here as well. Um, so it'll just be interesting. The legislature is very busy, has a lot to do, but they'll have redistricting to worry about this fall as well. Yeah, a lot of growth. Well, thank you so much, Ferris Sabawi, for joining us this morning. Have a good weekend, Ferris. Thanks, guys. And taking a look outside with live cam, we're up to 80 degrees now. Well, that's not outside with live cam, but <laughs> take my word for it. There you go. <laughs> But this is now all the people there out go. there. So that's kind of, gotta go with the census. Yeah, we do have a fair amount of clouds right now, and I think we keep a, a fair chunk of them around today. And so that's going to help to keep temperatures down maybe a degree or so. Speaking of down, the aquifer dropped down another six tenths of a foot yesterday, or excuse me, in this morning's reading, and mold remain on the moderate side. As far as uh, looking outside, again, we have some of these clouds, and what that will do with temperatures, first of all, we're at 77 right now, 84 down the road at Stinson. In, and we're going to be mostly cloudy, yes, humid around this morning, and then partly cloudy skies. Again, that sort of mixture of sunshine and clouds. One or two showers, especially down to the east and to the southeast today. Slightly better chance for a shower to tomorrow, primarily up to the north. And then we go into Sunday, and uh, we'll call it scattered showers and storms around here. And of course, with a few showers, a couple of extra clouds, and temperatures just shave a degree off each and every day. So not bad for the uh, you know the middle of August when we're usually just blazing on broil. Uh, it's just a good simmer, I guess you can call it. Okay, simmer's all right. Taking a look out there with Trans Guide, things looking good at I-10 and Vance Jackson. A chance to get out and enjoy some of the best food in San Antonio starts tomorrow, Colonaria. The two-week foodie event lasts until August 28th, and R.J. Marcus is at Sangria on the Berg with more details. Hi, R.J. Hey, R.J., I love the framed artwork behind you, identifying the different cuts of beef as sliders, tacos, etc. Oh, yeah. It's appropriate. 
Oh, yeah, yeah. We were having a lot of fun here, Mark and Stephanie, at Sangria on the Berg on Fredericksburg Road. And you guys just mentioned it right there. Restaurant Week kicking off this weekend right here in the San Antonio area. Dozens of restaurants are going to be taking part of this. It is a great opportunity for you guys, for people out there, to go and check out some of these great restaurants. And joining me now is Cesar Cepeda. He's the owner of Sangria at the Berg, and he is really working his magic for us already. I got to say, tough assignment for me this morning, getting to try out some of this amazing food that Caesar has already put together. So what are we working on here, Caesar? Awesome. This is kind of a things from our dinner menu that's coming out soon. So it's a chicken and shrimp uh, pasta. Um, so we already had the chicken and went in earlier. We uh, flipped the uh, shrimp. So now we're going to go in with all of our red onions, mm -hmm. some garlic. And then we Very have nice. a house marinara that we make. So that's all going to saute down. So we make this marinara, about four hours on this marinara, a little bit of heavy cream. Very nice. And and basically, Caesar, what you're talking about here is the shrimp and chicken pasta. Mm -hmm. So just to let you guys know, these are fixed menus that are going to be part of all these uh, restaurant week menus, but they're also going to be at a great price. So it's a great opportunity for you guys to go out there and check out some of this stuff. We also have the fajita burger, which Caesar was talking about earlier, which is a mix of uh, brisket and fajita beef, right? Yes, we're using heart brand uh fajita, their skirt steak, so grinding it up with uh, brisket, jack cheese, salsa verde, the peppers and onions, guacamole. It just sounds, it's very San Antonio, so we're, we're proud to have it. Absolutely, and you mentioned very San Antonio. This is a big, big deal here for San Antonio and the food industry. Caesar, just kind of talk about, you know, the past 18 months you guys have, you know, been affected by the pandemic, of course, what it's like to have people support the food industry here in San Antonio, and what it means for you guys to have these two weeks to really kind of showcase your all's uh, delicious food. For sure, you know, the, the past, you know, couple years have been rough, so having people in the restaurants great, having, uh, doing special things like this, working with culinary, which we've tried to work with, somehow we've tried to work with uh, nonstop, but bringing this back and having a couple weeks where you can try some new fun stuff and our guests can try some of our ideas, it's just a fun thing to do. Yeah, and absolutely, and we were talking earlier, of course, uh, for people that are planning to go out to any of these restaurants, including here Sangria in the Berg, be a little bit patient oh, yeah. because uh, these people are working hard behind the scenes. You can see Caesar uh, working his magic here, but also kind of be patient with the wait staff a little bit because uh, we're having a little bit of a shortage right now. Yeah, our staffing is short. It is uh, very short right now. We're trying to, we're doing our best and, and everybody's, uh, the people that are working are working very hard. So make your reservations. It's necessary, mm -hmm. especially right now, especially a smaller restaurant. Make your reservations and um, Get in here and have a good time and uh, be patient with your staff because we're all trying very, very hard. Yeah, and there are takeout options also available sure. for many of these restaurants. So make sure that you go on the website. Culinary, of course, is hosting this event and it wraps up on August 28th. So it's a two week event. Of course, dozens of restaurants. Caesar, my guy right here, doing some great stuff for the community and for the food industry. What are we going to try here? This is our chicken, uh, chicken shrimp pasta. Okay, so what, this is the right final. There. Yeah, okay. I'm going to try this out, guys, okay? Bear with me here. <laughs> <laughs> this is the taste it's test. It's amazing. I already know the answer. So nice marinara, <laughs> nice little creamy marinara, chicken and shrimp. It's going to be hot. Fresh basil, parmesan. Yeah. It is truly delicious, yeah. Mm. That is great stuff. Okay, I'm going to finish this up, guys. <laughs> You, I, I might take some back to you guys. You had us at brisket nice. and fajita burger, man. I know. RJ, all your coworkers are jealous. Uh, they right are. Now. I need to try that too. Yes, sir. <laughs> RJ Marquez over at Sangria yeah, guys. on the Berg. Thank you, sir. Time now is 940, and you're watching GMSA at 9. It's a fun Friday. After the break, sports headlines with David Sears. We're talking Spurs Summer League and some bright spots on the court. Welcome back, 944. Quick correction, my hunch was actually right. We're still the seventh largest city in the country. We had a boo-boo in our online story. We did see growth over the last yes. 10 years, considerable growth here in the San Antonio metro area, but overall still the seventh largest city, not the sixth. No, and for now, let's go ahead and check in with David and RJ. RJ, are you still eating there? Oh my gosh, he's just showing off now. <laughs> Guys, if we're going to talk sports, we got to have food, right? Amazing food to At go least. along with some sports. Food and snacks, absolutely. <laughs> I know, yeah, yeah, I know, David. It <laughs> David, I, I know he's a, he's a little bit jealous right now. I, I know that. for sure. I know, David. Hey. I will hook you up, man. We'll take some stuff back for you. <laughs> Don't talk with your mouth full and get a napkin. Oh. <laughs>
<laughs> All right, so we're going to start talking. We have napkins here, yeah. <laughs> we're we're going we're gonna to start with, with Becky Hammond, and it seems like Becky's getting out there a little bit more as far as doing some uh, national magazine, national TV interviews. She uh, did a sit-down with uh, Sports Illustrated. I don't know if she was actually one-on-one. They might have done it over the phone. But Sports Illustrated had a really in-depth article and interview with Becky Hammond talking, uh, talking about the process she goes through when she goes and does interviews. She got in some detail about how she approaches each team and, and uh, their interview process. And then she talked about how there are 30 teams in the league and getting one mm-hmm. of the jobs when there's only four or five open every year is very, very difficult. Yeah, David, and I think we were talking about this yesterday. I wonder if this is just kind of a a deal where Becky wants to be a little bit more out front and be a little bit more in the national perspective when it comes to hiring head coaches. She's obviously qualified to do the job. She's uh, done several interviews at this point already and worked, of course, with the Spurs and Greg Popovich for years. But in the perspective of the national scene, she I don't know if she's brought up as often as we bring her up here in San Antonio. So I think that's part of the move. And plus, she was also an ESPN uh, over Summer League. So I think this is her trying to get out there a little bit more and kind of show a little bit more of her credentials to the public as well as to these uh, NBA franchises. Yeah, she, it, it's going to be one of those things where it's it's going to be her and the right fit. And, uh, you know, she's she's learning how to do the interview process. She's learning how to deal with these teams and, and their needs. And you know she does some serious studying about each team before she goes into that interview. And it's about not what they want to hear she talks about is what I feel like I can do for this team and how to make them a better team and so she's uh, she's learning that that interview process and like you said it's it's hard it's not it's not an easy thing to go in there when there's only four or five jobs but she's going through the process about to start her eighth season with the Spurs so one day one day Becky Hammond is going to be a head coach in the NBA I, I just <laughs> I truly believe that and I'm going to get on that bandwagon again. I hope the Spurs don't let her go. I hope she becomes a Spurs head coach one day. Pop's got everything he needs. He's got five championship rings. He's got all the wine he can drink, and he's got an Olympic yeah, gold medal. Yeah. Well, he can borrow one. He didn't get the medal, but he can borrow one. Every time he wants to see the Olympic gold medal, he just calls Keldon Johnson and says, hey, let me see that gold. Come on over. <laughs> and have a glass of wine, right. and we'll talk Pop's, about the good Exactly, time. yeah, yeah. And Pop's, then watch Becky come and leave the team. He's got all the food and stuff. Yeah, got everything he needs. <laughs> yeah, no, I think ideally this would be, this would be a nice time to maybe transition over we'll see what happens of course no indication yet from uh, coach pop whether he's planning to stick around uh, for the near future yeah. but you would imagine that um, that Becky's definitely up on that list there sometimes I hope pops not watching because I don't want to I, I don't know what he's <laughs> me, gonna say to me me too, he me. <laughs> me too. Yeah, no go why don't you retire and I, well, oh, okay okay I'll come live with you and hang out drink wine and, and you can show me show off all your championship trophies to all my friends um, all right, let's get to the, the preseason in, in Vegas. The Spurs actually won a game last night. They beat Charlotte. They had yes. Yeah, they were they were missing two guys though. Primo didn't play, and neither did uh, Devin Vassell. Primo's got a sore knee, and Devin Vassell's got a tight hammy. However, what a big night for Trey Jones. Thirty four mm-hmm. points, eight rebounds, nine assists, twelve of twenty shooting, and only one three out of those thirty four points. Yeah, Trey Jones with a near triple-double. And for people, I know people are disappointed that Patty Mills is no longer part of the Spurs roster. Of course, everyone loves Patty Mills. He was a big food guy, too, by the way. But, um, but you know, Trey Jones is the guy that the Spurs are leaning on to basically kind of take over that role for Patty, come off the bench, give them some instant offense. And he's looked great over the summer league. And uh, it might be time to maybe, maybe sit Trey as well, because if they want him to be a big part of this season moving forward, then I think Trey's gotten, uh, gotten enough enough uh, game game experience here over the summer. How's his towel waving, though? Does he need to work on that? That's a <laughs> point apart. I mean, no one can, can wave the towel like Patty. Patty. Right. He's got to have some towel right. waving skills. Got to put you know your heart in it. Yeah. yeah. All right, yeah. real quick. Those Cowboys. skills are unmatched. Yeah. Cowboys tonight taking on Arizona 9 p.m. We know Dak is not going to be playing tonight. I think, what, it last preseason game, like 16 guys set out for the Cowboys, so I don't know how many guys are going to play and not play, but it's Kickoff is at 9 o'clock tonight. Cowboys and Arizona Cardinals. No Dak. No Dak. No Dak. Yeah, of course, David. The Cowboys getting an extra preseason game. And, you know, we'll see what happens with Dak. I think, for the most part, we don't really need to see Dak at all, in my opinion, in the preseason. Just let him get ready. We are less than a month away now from that season opener at the Bucks versus Tom Brady. But... 
this will be a good good experience for the young guys, rookies. Micah Parsons has done a great job as a defensive rookie so far. All right, we're going to leave you alone so you can finish your breakfast or lunch or uh, <laughs> dinner, whatever it is. You know, so you can pack that. it up and bring it This will it take care of the job for sure. Yeah. Breakfast yeah. and lunch. Oh I, I right. will, guys. Yes, don't worry about that. Right. 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 It's on the way. David, Thanks, guys. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Have Thank a you great guys. weekend. <laughs> David's in for Justin. I'm rather David's over there. Mike's Mike. in for Justin this morning. <laughs> Mike's over here. Did we have to get a close up of all that food? Because now nah, I'm. Yes. Really I know. <laughs> yes, we, we are did. all very hungry. But yeah. you should be used to that on SA Live. Well, I was That's just going to say, true. RJ, tell Cesar said hi. Yes, because he, you know, I, but I'm not eating, so we're like we're usually doing. Anyway, um, got the Wi Fi in here working, so take a look at this picture. It's very cool. The moon, which is a waxing crescent, is going to be full on the 22nd, if memory serves me, and kind of hidden behind the trees right there. But it's just a great look. It's almost like a, a Halloween-looking picture out there. So thanks very much for the uh, KSAC Connect shot. We had a lot more clear skies earlier this morning, and now the clouds have started to fill in. I think we keep a, a fair amount around throughout the day. And that is going to help to keep temperatures down a notch. All right, going back still to the 1st of July, we've only had 38 days. Now, this is the average low and the high, not just the high temperatures, but only uh, we've had 38 days that are at or below average. Yesterday, the average temperature, yes, was above normal, but... That's because the low temperature was so warm. The high yesterday was 95. Normal high temperature is 97 degrees. And there have only been two days going back to the 1st of July. It was the 3rd. We got up to 95, so that was above the respective high temperature that day, the respective average high temperature. And then on the 1st of August, we got up to 97, and that tied the high temperature, the normal average high temperature. Every other day has been, the highs have been below average like yesterday and like today is going to be. Those few extra clouds, I think it'll shave one more degree off and again uh, you know yes it may be 100 in your backyard down here to the west and southwest but only a couple of uh, readings out there are going to be really in triple digit range now we will have some heat index readings getting up into triple digit range but not anything that's just you know outrageously hot which I don't think anybody's complaining about that. We don't have anything showing up on the uh, satellite picture right now, but there are a couple of showers along the coast, and we'll see a few more of those. And uh, computer models, yeah, we will have a few of these showers around, and more are going to be hanging around here on Sunday, or at least a better chance of rain on Sunday. We'll still keep a few lingering ones going into the uh, the first part of next week, and uh, then we'll then also with the cloud cover, obviously that's going to keep temperatures few degrees below normal even going into the first part of next week and then finally back up into the uh, the mid 90s by it looks like Wednesday or Thursday of next week. So again, today will be up to 90 at noon, partly cloudy skies, high temperature today up to 94, a few showers down especially off to the east and to the southeast, 20% chance for some rain, but just Take that up a little bit tomorrow, a little more on Sunday. Temperatures get shaved off another couple of degrees. Best opportunity to see any rain is going to be on Sunday. A lot more coming up after the break. Stick around. So like a little chance of rain this weekend. Yeah, uh, better chances as we go on in through the weekend, especially on uh, on Sunday. All right. He's back at noon. Yeah. And then SA Live. And SA Live. Not, not going anywhere.